So hey everyone, it's Trevor Turnbull here from Sports Networker, and I'm joined on the line today by Kevin Cote. Kevin is the digital, uh, sorry, the assistant director of digital marketing at the Golden State Warriors. How's it going, Kevin? Good. How are you doing, Trevor? Really good. Really good. Thank you. Um, so I came across Kevin um, actually through some tweets. Uh, I was following and engaging in some conversations with Brian Strabian over at the San Francisco Giants, and we actually just got done discussing this. Uh, Brian and uh, Kevin know each other quite well and, and communicate back and forth about best practice and the social media side of things. But anyways, I was going through what the Warriors were doing right now uh, with regards to Twitter and Facebook, and I thought, wow, these guys are really um, you know, taking the lead as it, as it relates to creating engaging contesting and, and campaigns that involve players and fans and the like. So I thought I got to get this guy on the line and talk to him about this. So uh, thanks very much for doing this with us, Kevin. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so let's start with the Twitter side of things. So you've been, well, actually, let's start first of all, uh, for those people that don't know you, how long have you been with the team and what, what exactly is your role with the team? Uh, so I've been with the team since 2005. Uh, started out actually, actually 2004. I was a PR intern, and then full time since 2005. I uh, came on mostly on the email marketing side, and then kind of evolved to the point now where I'm overseeing all of our digital marketing, uh, everything re revolving around our website, everything revolving around email, and then all of our social media. Okay. So and on the Twitter side of things, then when did you guys first get started with Twitter from the team perspective? Um, we actually, believe it or not, we're one of the, we, we were on the on the late side on Twitter. We we were monitoring it and experimenting with it, but we didn't go full force actually right at the get go like some other teams did, and that definitely kind of set us behind a little bit. But then once we realized fully how powerful it could be, um, we went we went at it full force, and that's what we've been uh, we've seen a lot more success lately with some of the things we've been doing and fans have been loving it so and, and we we love using it because it's such a powerful tool yeah no i'm looking forward to diving into some of the stuff you guys are doing here because i think it's really innovative and a lot of people get some value out of this so let's go back to um one of the first things that we uh, that you mentioned that you guys had done here uh, the, and that's the tweety a day and that was back when in december of last year yeah, actually, right. Uh, yeah, early December of this yeah, of 2011. So right when the seasons began. Okay, and what was the concept behind that then? Maybe just fill us in on on what this was all about. Sure. Yeah. So uh, every year to kick off the season, to kick off training camp, and everything, we have an event called Media Day. Every team has it across the league and across all the other sports. Um, kind of a, the first time the team is all together, everyone, uh, all the media comes, the, the guys shoot all their radio spots, all their TV spots, all the, the promos that are going to show in the arena. Um, and so we we wanted them, you know, with social media being such a huge, powerful tool now and with most of our players involved in, with, in social media in one way or another, we wanted that to be a, a big component of it. Um, so what we did is uh, we set up a basically a social media zone, a, a social media hub, um, as part of Tweety Day, uh, Media Day, and we called it Tweety a Day. Cool. Um, so we had live streaming coverage for two to three hours um, where we were just rotating players in for interviews live on the air, um, getting questions from fans who were using our Tweety a Day hashtag, um, and, you know, giving fans that kind of inside look into what goes on and then also letting them kind of participate by asking questions um, and then in addition to the live stream, we had several computers and phones set up where the players could tweet from their own personal accounts, and we encouraged them to use that Tweety Day hashtag throughout the day. Um, and again, just have these conversations with fans, and um, we actually had our players take over our Twitter account for a while. We had them take over our Facebook page and kind of just drop notes to some of the fans, even some of our players who aren't actively involved in social media, which... Is, uh, is pretty few now, but um, <laughs> even they were getting involved and in, you know going back and forth with fans, and it was it was a, a really cool experience for, for them and, and most of all for our fans. No kidding, yeah. So what what was the criteria exactly for the for the average fan to get involved in this? Did they just have to be following you guys on Twitter, or did they have to fill out an application, or what was the process that you guys used to to screen the right people? 
Yeah, so, I mean, we just, you know, like I said, we promoted the use of the hashtag on Twitter. We we sent an email about it as well, but we, and we also had it as the number one thing on our, our website. We also promoted it on Facebook. Um, but as, as far as, like, getting a lot of the questions from fans, it was just encouraging them to use the hashtag and then, you know, aggregating all that together and picking out some of the best ones. Um, and, and it was really powerful to see how it worked. Yeah. No, it's a very unique experience and obviously a testament to the power of these tools, right? To be able to give the average fan access to the players and the executive and the staff and everybody else that they might see as unreachable at times. These tools, I think, have really kind of transcended those, um, that distance. It's helped bring people together, right? Exactly. So let's move on to the next one here because this one, these next two are, are a little bit more current and uh, very cool, obviously. The... The dub the vote first of all. Maybe give us some background into this. It's um, well, I'll let you explain it. What what is dub the vote all about? Yeah, so uh, the NBA kind of challenged all the teams to do something creative centered around All Star voting. Um, this year, All Star voting, there was no actual paper ballots, so it was all digital, mobile. It was uh, you could vote online, you could vote via text, and you could vote on your tablet um, or phone. So with that in mind, we decided to make you know more of a, a digital centric campaign. Um, and what we decided was uh, we come up with this concept called Dub the Vote, where uh, if you're familiar with the phenomenon of planking, um, that's <laughs> kind of where awesome. the inspiration came from. Where we were going to ask our fans to pose in the shape of a W uh, while voting for one of our players. So. Cool. Um, you know, they've got out the word to vote, but it also forced our fans to be very creative. Um, and, again, they were able to submit these photos just using the hashtag that the vote. Again, we aggregated them all together, um, checked it constantly for all the photos that came in, some amazingly creative stuff. Our fans are amazing that way. Yeah. Um, and we saw just incredible creativity, and we were able to, you know, get the word about, out about voting, too. And then we had... In arena implementation where we had Stephen Curry on video telling people how they dubbed the vote. We had some of our players, that, or some of our rookies doing the post for us and helped to get out the word. Um, and then the, the, ultimately we, you know, we put all the best photos up on warriors.com um, for everyone to see and encouraged people to, you know, do better than, do better than this if you can. Um, eventually we narrowed all of those photos down to a top 12 put those up on our Facebook page and then let the fans vote on um, which were the top three photos uh, out of those 12. And so we received, I think, 77,000 votes in two days or three days. Wow. Um, got the top three, and then we had those top three fans in their photos. They came to the, they were able to come to a game. We showed their photos up on the big screen and then had the fans in the arena actually decide who the winner was. Wow. Um, and, and then the winner, which was a, it was actually a really creative family with five kids, and the five kids all shipped in the W with their phones and their iPads and their laptops. Um, they, they, they won the ultimate prize, which was they actually got to come to a practice and meet the three guys on the All-Star ballot, Monte Ellis, Stephen Curry, and David Lee. Wow. Um, so it was a great experience for them, and they had a great time. And um, Overall, it was just a, a fun way to, you know, be, to, to be creative ourselves, but then to kind of let our fans be creative as well and take advantage of, a hashtag again. Yeah, no, and kudos to you guys for this. Yeah, I, we're obviously looking at this page here right now, and there's, you know, a number of very creative photos. There, it's amazing how original some of these truly are. Um, mm. And I and I think it's really testament to the NBA as a league as well, in in how social and how much they how social they are, and how much they really reach out to the fan base. Um, and you know, obviously, with you guys doing your your final voting even at the game on the big screen. That's that's very cool. Uh, so Yeah, that's, the NBA is very progressive with all things digital, and so that's where a big help as far as uh, them supporting what we do on our end and then, you know, uh, giving us ideas and just full support. And uh, it's, it's good to be affiliated with such a, a powerful digital presence. No doubt. So is there any kind of stats that you guys can share on this? Like what was the... Uh, in the end, how many photos did you end up having uploaded to this uh, contest? I want to. We probably received over a hundred photos, um, of which you know we put the best ones up. 
but you know, it, and then we we narrowed it down. Um, I don't have the exact number, but I would say it's over a hundred. Over a, you know, a very, it was only a two or three week span. So yeah, um, it was great. So the, obviously great on the fan engagement side of things. How did it uh, impact the voting of your players on the All Star game? Well, yeah, that's. I mean, I can say that uh, Monte Ellis, who received the most votes from our team, he he finished seventh among West guards last year. He even actually finished ninth. So uh, I don't know if we can take full credit for that improvement. <laughs> uh, he's actually he's played pretty well, so he probably deserves a lot of that credit. But uh, you know, I'll go I'll go ahead and take some of the credit, I guess. Yeah, we'll give you some of that credit for sure. <laughs> okay, thanks. All right. No, that's a great one. I, I really love this example here because it's a, it's a great example of how you can build contesting around um, an event, right? And really engage the fan base and have it uh, impact the, the results, too. So it's. Yeah, uh, and the other interesting thing to see was not only people submitting photos, but the conversations that happened around the photos. You know, some people might not feel comfortable doing a, a whole photo or you know, planning as much as this, but, uh, but they definitely enjoyed the photos and there was a lot of conversation happening around it, which in turn helped our cause of, uh, of gaining a notice for our players who were on the ballot. So. Right. So that was the real purpose in creating your own unique, ha unique hashtag then, right? Yeah, exactly. So you guys could track that and obviously have to have the fans spread the word. So even if they're not sending in photos, you're at least... Um, getting the word out that uh, you have these kind of engaging campaigns going on. Yeah, exactly. All right, so let's move on to the next one here because this one's actually uh, uh, still coming up here on February 15th, the Warriors Tweet Up. Maybe give us a, a little bit of information on what this is all about. Yeah, so this is, uh, this is an idea that, you know, several of the teams have done this, and so um, this is the first time we're doing it, uh, and we're really excited about it, especially since we have Stephen Curry involved. He, uh, he's obviously one of our best players, and he's very active in Twitter, and he fully gets it. He, he really understands social media, and he utilizes it in a lot of great ways. And this is another way. He, he jumped at the chance to be involved with us. Um, so what happens is uh, it's basically a, uh, we're, we're encouraging fans to buy tickets to the game, and when they do, when they buy through this tweet-up offer, um, they get to come to a post-game Q&A with Steph. Um, they also get which I think is really cool, um, this T-shirt, which it, it, it looks like our Warriors logo, but it's actually uh, our Twitter handle, at Warriors. Nice. Uh, on the bottom, it's a hashtag that we use on game day, Let's Go Warriors. You got the Twitter bird kind of in there. And then on the back, instead of just saying Curry with his number, it's his Twitter handle, at Stephen Curry 30 um, So we like that. Steph, when he saw it, he loved it too. So... He wanted a bunch for himself, so um, <laughs> it's kind of a cool way to, to get our own handle out there, a unique type of shirt, um, just for these people who are coming to the game, and a way for Steph to have his handle out there, too, and uh, fully embrace the, the Twitter world. Yeah, no, it's, uh, as you mentioned, we've, we've seen the rise of the, the tweet-ups over the last couple of years across all the major professional leagues. Um, but they just seem to be getting more and more creative every time um, I come across them, and Obviously, involving the players is a big one because, you know, your fan base is obviously a fan of the team, but they really connect to these players, don't they? It's it's a unique experience that they never forget. Yeah, and that's where it's great to have uh, Steph hit, hit by and hit, you know, he's as excited about it as we are. He's sent several tweets about it, telling fans they should come, you know, using the hashtag. We're telling people to use the hashtag JSW tweet up to, to submit questions for Steph that we'll actually ask that night. We'll also be giving away prizes during the game um, for people who do use the hashtag. And, we'll, you know, we'll have a conversation with those people throughout the game. So that's going to be cool. Very cool. Uh, another question around this then, Kevin. Have you guys uh, looked into ways that you might monetize your use of social media, specifically around the... Um, uh, around Twitter, because we're talking about that right now, but ways to integrate sponsors at all. Have you guys uh, considered that? Yeah, um, and it's, you know, something like the tweet up where it's actually a ticket purchase and it's heavily promoted on Twitter. That's that's one way to monetize. And then uh, as far as sponsors, yeah, that's the NBA actually had some, some rules for a while that kind of limited what we were able to do, but that's only because they needed to fully understand everything themselves and kind of decide what was going to be allowed and what wasn't. Um, but those rules, uh, 
now allow us to do some more things with sponsors, and that's kind of one of the next great frontiers is involving sponsors fully into what what we're doing in the social landscape, and then you know in turn them involving us in what they do. And so again, it's the, the concept of spreading everything socially and working together. Right. Yeah. No. And I think you're bringing up a good point there on the um, you know the monetizing side of it is really integrating it into more than just Twitter. Right. It's it's a live event. It's a ticket sale. It's it's all these different things that um, help contribute to the bottom line for the team, but also provide added value for a potential sponsor. Um, from my perspective, anyways, that seems like the obvious opportunity. It sounds like you're uh, thinking the same thing. Exactly. All right. So let's talk about Facebook here now. So we were discussing this briefly before we got on the call and I asked you to hold off on telling me because I was interested in hearing about this and I wanted to hear it fresh. So, <laughs> But you yeah. mentioned you guys are using Facebook and a Facebook page as well as check-ins to do some really cool stuff. So uh, I've got the, the Facebook Golden State Warriors home game Facebook page up here right now. Tell us what this is all about. So yeah, so, so we have our, our regular Facebook page, which we do a lot with, obviously, but um, as far as a, a game experience, we have, um, we set up, you know, Golden State Warriors home game, which is the place where we, when, during the home game, we encourage fans to check in whenever they're, they're at the game, and it's obviously a concept that every team is doing right now, it, 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 you know, some teams are using Foursquare, um, you know, all, all the different type of check-in uh tools that are out there, but we've pretty much remained very, putting a lot of muscle behind Facebook, um, because that's what we pushed from the beginning, that's what we're encouraging our fans to do, and that's where we see a lot of power in what we're doing, um, and so what we do is, at every single game, we have a new check-in deal, which is something Facebook offers, um, so anytime someone checks into the game, they, once they check in, it will say, click here to claim tonight's special deal, and it's anything from a post-game player Q&A um, to, you know, shooting free throws on the court after the game. Uh, we actually even had a photo with Jerry West one night. Uh, that was only for the first 25, but, I mean, some really amazing, unique experiences for fans that, uh, again, goes into that added value column, and, and then, you know, not, it conditions our fans that every time they come to the game, they, they're going to check in to see what the deal is. Um, and we've actually seen a lot of success where we've been number one or number two in check-ins across the league, uh, battling that with the Lakers right now, trying to get to that number one spot. Um, but we've seen a lot of success with it. A lot of fans love it. And we just, you know, we're going to definitely keep doing it. Wow, it's cool. I'm just flipping through some of the tabs on here as well. And you've got uh, a deals tab here as well um, with unique T-shirts and bobbleheads and stuff that people can claim. Um, is that around yeah, the so same those lines? Our, those, yeah, those are all of our past deals that we've run in, during games. Yeah, we had a, a free bobblehead the other night. We, you know, post-game free throws, Q and A's with players, photos with the Warrior girls, uh, special gifts from Jack in the Box. It's been yeah, so. That's another way we've, we've integrated sponsors into this, um, and so that's another way we've been able to monetize it. So it's it's been really successful and something to recommend for for any team. Excellent. Well, these are all great examples of how, you know, sports teams nowadays can be proactively using both Twitter and Facebook. Um, I'm very impressed with what you guys are doing. Obviously, there's, uh, you know, it's a, the Wild West, as we say, in the social media world. I'm sure there's a million more things that will come in the next coming months here. But, yeah. um, Kevin, it sounds like you got your finger on the pulse for as it relates to the social media stuff. And I look forward to what you guys got coming up here in the future. Thanks. I appreciate it. All right, thanks very much for doing this, Kevin. No problem. Thanks for having me.